episode of Police Off the Cuff After Hours. Uh, my name is Mark DeMeo. I'm your host. I'm with my partner, my co-host in all things law enforcement, the very handsome Bill Cannon. What's up, Bill? Doing great, man. You know, Tom is unbelievable. <laughs> I, I look at his videos. One of them, he has 80,000 views on a tour, I forget it, well, of Greenwich Village, I think it was, right? I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe. Oh, don't maybe. act like you don't Midtown. pay attention Midtown. to the numbers. Come on. I actually, 80,000 sounds a little high. I don't know if that's right, but uh, but yeah, Midtown, I think, has the most. All right, let, let, let's introduce you first. Yeah, Bill's um, getting excited over here. Bill's always chopping at the bit. <laughs> My guest tonight is a repeat. I don't know. He, he actually had the nerve to come back. He didn't learn enough the first time. He's I didn't. A uh, offender, he's, yes. <laughs> he's, a, he's a repeat offender. He's back with us tonight on Police Off the Cuff After Hours. He's a, a hysterical comedian. I love listening to him and watching him when he's on stage. Uh, and he also has a really great, um, he's a tour guide in this city, and, but he has a great uh, show on YouTube where he takes you on tours of New York City. And uh, Bill, if you haven't noticed, is fascinated by numbers. He, <laughs> I get all day. Would you believe so-and-so has 25,000 views on his YouTube? I, and I'm like, yeah, okay. Like all day, he's 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 fascinated by numbers, but apparently you have eighty thousand hits on uh, a one of your videos, something like that. I don't know. No, that's great. That, yeah. that means listen. And I try to talk Bill off the ledge all the time. I said he's doing something universal. Um, you know, people from all over the world who are looking to travel to New York City. Uh, you know, and they they're looking. What are they going to do here if they put in tours? Yours will pop up. So yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. that's uh, that's a good you you hit a broad market there, and it's, yeah. it's brilliant. Well, and also too, in addition to that, is right now people are at home, like they're watching TV, they're watching YouTube, they're watching, they're looking for stuff to watch. So it goes beyond just people who want to travel to New York. It goes to people who can't travel to New York, who have no intention of coming here. They're like, I want to see it, and I can't get there, and I'm not going there anytime soon. So let's just take a look at what's going on there. But you, uh, you're very well prepared. I mean, you, you actually, you know everything about the city, which is. Incredible. I know, I know a good amount of the history. Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, I had to study. Obviously, you have to take the test for the tour guide in New York, which is pretty ridiculous. They, they give you a test, but it's good. I guess they vet the people who are going to be talking about the city. Uh, you have to take that, and then I just read on my own. I'm constantly just reading books about New York and and studying the history and everything. So, you know, there's you a. Have, um, there, I, I have a. Uh, one waiting here. Let me see if I can. Uh, you can recognize this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was in Midtown. That was over the summer. Oh, look at you with the technology, man! You're able to show video at the same time as I'm just learning this stuff, and I'm like, wow, this is impressive, Bill. There's no controlling him. <laughs> There's no control. He's out of control, right? He's now. out of control. It's a mess. This is com <laughs> it's completely derailed. I'm, I'm out of control with the technology. I don't know what it is. It's yeah, stopping, man. Well, yeah, that is it. That's it, Bill. You're we're watching. <laughs> we're watching one of the videos. Well, it's one yeah, of that's the pretty videos. much what I do. I just, yeah, I just want to show our fans what you do. It's, it's yeah, no, it's 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 uh, what I basically just got doing was it's the easiest thing to do is I'm able to make it more often is I just walk down the street and basically give a tour of a neighborhood or a or a part of the city, talking about the history, talking about pop culture, everything about it, you know, and and even chiming in like with my opinion a little bit here and there, just kind of like you're hanging out with someone walking around. But you know what? I don't know if you've been on YouTube. This is kind of a big thing right now with 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 what a little different from what I'm doing. But people just walk around live streaming. I saw. I, I don't. I, I saw also some guys doing like videos about where the best hits took place. You know, the best mafia hits. Yes, and that's why I only bring this up because if you are interested in your Mister Technology, like Mark says you are, you should try to get into the the live streaming thing because you could just walk around with live streaming off your phone and say, "Hey, look at this place." Look at this place. Look at this place. And you could do pretty much that. And because it's live, people can tip you live. People can uh, people. It shows up more often on YouTube on people's search because uh, they're trying to promote the live streams. It's a good it's a good way to go. I don't do live stream because it's kind of a pain in the ass for me. But uh, but a lot of people do because you don't have to edit. You don't have to sit with a video for a week getting it ready. You just live stream and it's up. But you're, I mean, you're amazing, at, not just at doing the tours, but you're amazing at the technology, too. You, you, I mean, not really. I just edit and stuff. You guys do edit edit your stuff here, right, Mark? Oh, you guys edit all your... For us. Oh, someone does it for we're, you. We're, start, we're starting to try to learn, but we're old dogs. Bill does yeah. everything. 
Bill does. <laughs> and I'm an old dog. You can't teach me many new tricks. Man. Well, you guys are live streaming on YouTube now. That's pretty awesome. You guys weren't doing that before. No, I have one. I have one responsibility to show up. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty. I think pretty nice. It's a pretty good gig. Yeah, Bill. Bill is great. I love working with Bill. Um, you know, it, it, what what's that test like? Um, is it anything like the uh, the test that you take to become a citizen? No, uh, no. It's probably it's probably easier. Well. It's pretty easy in that all the pretty much all the questions are online. All you have to do is get a 95 out of a 140 to pass. You know what? You want to do a great show, and I'll, I'll be one of your guests. Let's take that test, but just with native New Yorkers. And see, <laughs> because, listen, I, I've never been anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? This is where I've only lived in New York, and I've lived in uh, Manhattan and in Queens. And now I'm in the Bronx and I bet you I won't pass that test. It's yeah. I mean, well, yeah, it takes a little bit of study. Like, well, here's a question that I think, uh, what year was the empire state building finished? For some reason, I say 1934. That was the first thing that came to my mind. Do you know, Bill? 32, 31. Oh, it was uh, you know what? I was close though. You were close. You were co Both of you guys were close, but it's not, it's multiple choice. So you guys would have, you guys would, if those were all choices, you guys would have, you guys would have screwed the pooch. That's good. If I would have seen, if, if, if there was anything in the thirties though, I would have got it. Yes. But if they were all in the thirties, you would have been stuck. Yeah. But that's, that's nitpicking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess you would have had a valid <laughs> argument if they got you wrong on that. But you know something, Mark, one of the things that I think it's important to bring up is, not only is Tom a funny, funny comic, but, you know, he has a law degree and to his parents' chagrin, he doesn't use it, you know, and his dad was was a brain surgeon. You know how they say you're not a brain surgeon. Yes, his dad was a, or is a brain surgeon. Right? No, he's yeah. not anymore. He retired. Oh, he's a retired brain surgeon. Yeah, yeah but I'll be honest with you. Uh, not for nothing. If you were my son and uh, <laughs> no, you're, you're, not. Degree, <laughs> you're not doing law we're going to have a problem. Yeah. Well, you know what? Hey, that's fair. That's a totally fair. Uh, that's a fair opinion to have. I mean, to be quite you're honest, gonna a, you're going to get a spanking as a grown man and then we'll move on. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny when I met, whenever I mention to people that I, that I used to, that I used to be a lawyer and I have a law degree and everything. The first question without fail out of people's mouths is, well, what do your parents think about that? Uh -huh. And I think people are just asking me that because they think themselves like, man, if you were my son, I'd kill you. Yeah. I mean, you know, some guy in the live chat, his name's Elijah Rasmussen. He said, Tom, you got that young Manson look going. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I usually get I usually get Ted Bundy. So I'll take that. That's one of all. Uh, well, what's the most exciting neighborhood you, you like to take a tour group through? Uh, I think the easiest neighborhood to do a tour through is Greenwich Village because there's so much history there. You being a music buff. You, you should know. I mean, there's tons and tons. I mean, from Dylan to Hendrix to you name it, they all played in the, in the village. I mean, obviously, you have all the, all the jazz as well. There's tons and tons of music there, as well as literature, as well as, uh, you know, plays and theater. There's, you know, social and, you know, political. And uh, it's just an incredible neighborhood with just so much history. That's what I, got, I think. The best. I got upset the last time I walked down Bleecker Street, maybe it was a, a year or two ago. And Matt Humanoff guitars had closed. Yeah, they closed. Like, oh my! God. I know. Like, I know. There for I don't know how many years. Fifty years, maybe. Yeah, Humanoff closed. Humanoff closed, it, and yeah. How cool would this have been if you would have been doing a tour of St. John's Cathedral yesterday, and got but got got caught in the middle of that that shootout right there? That's crazy, man. That was you crazy. Would have been like. Your tours, forget it. Hey, Bill would have been bugging. It would have went from eighty thousand to <laughs> eighty eight hundred million. If you had yeah. footage from that, yeah, with scared, with scared tourists, yeah. I mean, think about it. Because first of all, I went on a tour of that Saint uh, Saint John's Cathedral. It was in the two six, which is where I worked. And shout out to the pol police officers in the two six that uh, you know that took that guy down. Man, that was great police work. I don't know how they hit that guy from that far away. It, it, that, it, I don't even know. I would like to know how many shots were fired. I heard uh, several, but that was a pretty far shot. They hit that yeah. guy. That was, a, that was at least 25 yards. You know how that's when you go to the range, uh -huh. this point you shoot from 25 yards, that was at least 25 uh, yards. Up, uphill, too. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Well, bullets don't give a shit about going uphill. They don't care. No, but, but you know, luckily, going from point A to point B. Yeah. 
it, you know, he, it would have been, it's good that he got shot pretty quick because if the guy's just walking around going, shoot me, shoot me, shoot me, shoot me, and everybody's shooting, but they're not hitting him. And it's like, nobody yeah. can hit him for a half hour. Come on, damn it. Somebody <laughs> shoot me. <laughs> you know, you got a hundred New York City cops. Nobody can hit him. <laughs> that, yeah, that'd be pretty embarrassing if he's asking to be shot. Well, he was saying, kill me or kill. Yeah. Was saying that. I, I don't even I don't I didn't I haven't I read all the stuff. Kill me, kill me, kill me. He kept saying that. It was one think, of those, you know, uh, there's a there's a phenomenon called suicide by cop, and they that's what they're thinking that this guy uh, was doing. He well, wasn't he, he sure. wasn't firing, was he? Yeah, he fired yeah. a couple. He fired. Of he did he fired at at officers. Well, the, the no. news says he was oh, okay. shooting in the air, but you know, right. I saw the gun pointed toward the cops. So, oh, okay, I don't know how the news. They're such experts at uh, well, he, he ballistics and trajectory. The problem is, he could shoot in the air three times and then decide one time he's gonna right, yeah, you know, shoot straight, or he could shoot in the air and hit you know an apartment that's uh, across the street or something like that. Go through, right. you know, these bullets, they go on and on forever unless they have right. some, you know, right. so that happens all the time. People get shot in their apartments and uh, they don't know where it came from, what happened. It's just a straight bullet coming in there. So that's why you got to take them out. Yeah, it's great. That does happen. Like, uh, you know, that's actually so like in Nicaragua or my where my parents are from, my grandma used to live in a neighborhood where there was tons and tons of uh like revolutionary activity when the revolution was going on late seventies and stuff and the civil war throughout the eighties. And a lot of times the, there would be bullets just falling into her house. So she would have these bullet holes in her, in her ceiling and in her roof from bullets after celebrations, they shoot in the air and the bullets come down and they would come into her house. Yeah. I always wonder what happens to those bullets that get shot straight up in the air. Yeah. They come back down and they like, so my grandma literally had these bullet holes in her roof and in her like wall from bullets that would come back down into her house. It seems to be like a, a big time, like a third world country thing to let rounds go in the air. Oh yeah. You know, celebration of christening or whatever. It's always like, pow, 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 <laughs> pow, 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 you know? Yeah, they're, they're having fun doing it. It's like uh, New Year's Eve in the projects every day over there for them. <laughs> yeah, shoot, shooting guns, uh, shooting guns up in the air is a, it's a big thing. I don't mean I, christenings. I guess maybe they maybe <laughs> maybe they. Well, they do that a lot in like Iraq and Iran and stuff. It's part of the culture. Well, definitely during wartime in any of these places, like yeah. when there's a civil war going on, and in, in uh, you know there was a civil war basically throughout the '80s in Nicaragua. There, that's you know guns are everywhere, and they're just like, all right. You can go online and see the mishaps. There's actually video of uh, celebrations going on and somebody coming out and pop, pop, pop. And all of a sudden, it's like somebody's like, ow! <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I can't even imagine. That would be, be pretty upsetting. That'd be pretty upsetting, to put it mildly, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. You, you, guys, you guys never fought, uh, fired a gun in, in the police to, to celebrate something? <laughs> fired a gun in the air? Well, that, that's called suspension. <laughs> <laughs> you do that, you get suspended. Yeah, they're usually sent to the alcohol farm too, because that's why people that do that usually do it. They're drunk or something, you know. Oh, geez, yeah, I those, can't. Those accidental discharges, man, they always sound really ridiculous when you're at the range because you always hear like a new story, you know, and they'll tell you, so and so was cleaning their gun, but somehow, you know, and then it's like some crazy story follows. Like it went through three rooms and hit their car outside. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it hit the it hit his ex girlfriend's uh, tire. Yeah. Just randomly. Yeah. It went right through his uh, wife's window shield. Of her car, you know? <laughs> that happens. Yeah, there's always some crazy stories like that. Uh, you know, I was uh, I heard a story once uh, about these uh, these guys that they were using a phone. They, back in the day, used to use the phones the before cell phones. Mm -hmm. And you'd go to like uh, you'd go to like a phone company. And they had these a wall with just all phones there. So you turn out a roll call, you. And then, uh, you know, we used to have these revolvers back then. So if you spun them, and put it back in your host, just you know, just hang it out, keep doing that like an idiot. And then one time you hear pow! <laughs> like, oh, oh shit, what the fuck is that? Everybody okay? <laughs> and he had he had discharged it while spinning it. Yeah. Oh man. I, that's the I heard that story. I forget where I heard it over. You why, know, why, um, there's a, what's up you, you, you don't play with guns <laughs> it's not good yeah not i know a good thing to play with believe me i know i did i ever tell you the story i used to have a joke about it i had a i had a roommate in college who had a ton of of guns and i would come home from from school 
and he would be cleaning all the guns in the living room. Oof. Yeah, and I was just like, and he'd be watching like Band of Brothers or some like military TV show or something. He ended up joining the military. He served like three tours and everything. But uh, but yeah, he he was he just guns everywhere. So I was just I just got used to seeing them. Yeah, uh, but he. It was nuts. Like I would, I would come back and literally it was like the fun. I mean, like I tell this to people and they're like, what kind of psychopath are you living with? But it was funny to me at the time I'd come back from school, literally. And I'd come into the door and our, all the wind, all the lights were off. Uh, the only light was the TV showing band of brothers and he'd be cleaning all of his guns on our coffee table. Oh, before we go on further, uh, I just want to give a shout out to Elijah Rasmussen. He says, great show guys. I got to hear from research uh, on the central park five interview with Eric Reynolds, which happens to be one of our, uh, most controversial uh, episodes. But uh, back to what we were talking about, um, those uh, those rounds that, that tend to, what were you just saying? Oh, about your friend. Oh, if, yeah, yeah, you play with guns. If, if you're a, a gun buff or some, I, I, put it this way, I never clean my gun. The only time I clean my gun is if I'm going to the range. And I remember one time I was at the range and this guy was, <laughs> he goes up to the, he goes up we he had a revolver he was an old time guy and he knew the um the the guy because you got to inspect your guns so the first thing you do when you go to your range is you draw and present which means you take out your your service revolver you twist it around if it's a revolver you kick out the barrel and you hand it to them so the guy put uh not uh, almond, well, not the joys, uh, jo good and plenties. In oh, there. <laughs> and then the guy went to get the rounds out, shake, and then all these candies came out in his hand. And he's like, What the hell? What, what the fuck is this? And the guy goes, Oh man, I told my kids whenever they stop playing with the guns, dude, they got to put the bullets back in. <laughs> <laughs> they took the bullets and replaced and then them with this guy's head was going to explode. That's hilarious. And the guy that he knew he said, Ah, we got you, we got you. You know, it was funny. I, um, if you went to the range and your gun was dirty, or they would get pissed off at you, as they should, you know. And uh, I remember one time I went to the range, and for some reason, I got like six, six different. This is when we had revolvers. I had like six different types of rounds in my gun. So we responded. These guys in the three zero bank were uh, coming down Riverside Drive, and they were shooting at the police. And finally, they crashed at 97th and Riverside, and they ran into the park there, and uh, the cops chased them. And I was, you know, we didn't get there till after this, and the cops got in a gunfight with them. So they, the cops shot a couple of them. But when all the bosses come to the scene, their job is to check everyone's guns. So <laughs> the lieutenant checks my gun. And he goes, you fucking fired. I go, no, I didn't. Because <laughs> I had all different rounds in the gun. You know, he goes, what the hell is this shit? I go, that's what they gave me at the rage. And he's like, he like looked at me like he totally didn't believe me, you know? Wait, how often do you guys go to, how often do you guys, did you guys go to the range? Did you guys actually go to practice? Well, I think it's twice a year. Yeah, it's twice a year you got to go. It's not, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. You know, you know what, we before, say, oh, should be trained more. Yeah, but it costs money. It costs lots of money. And when you have a police department of 34,000, 35,000, they don't have enough space to have people go to the range, you know. You know, there's different year. there's different levels of the range, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you that, but before I do, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Mimi J20, uh, J2. She says, hi, gentlemen, just popped in to say hello. So, hello, Mimi. Hi, Mimi. <laughs> so, uh, there's different levels of the range. So, for example, if you're like a regular cop, you go to the range and it's going to be a whole day affair. So uh, you'll go in the morning and uh, it pretty, you know, uh, you, you go, you get your lessons. This that the further you go up, um, the less time you got to spend there. So it's like also like a hookup. I remember one time I went, don't ask me who made the call for me, but I got the captain's range and the captain's range. They clean your guns for you after if you, cause that means you're a captain or above. Mm hmm so you'll go out and you do your shooting and then you don't even have to clean your own guns. They have other cops there that'll clean your guns for you. I guess while you go have get coffee or whatever, and then you come back and you get your guns and they're completely, I don't know if they still do that anymore, but that was a good range today. So it's like an actual like NYPD range. It's not like a, a shooting range. I was going to say a driving range. No, no, no. It's a, it's the NYPD range. It's in the Bronx. Um, 
it's right here by Orchard Beach. And um, you know, it's funny. The, the good thing about the cops is they'll always shoot um, no matter what the weather is. So if your day to go to the range just happens to fall on a day where it's a terrible storm, um, the inclement weather, you name it, you better dress appropriately because they're not going to send you home. You have to be able to shoot in any type of weather. Oh, wow. Because, you know, incidents and shootouts, they don't wait for nice weather. So when I leave my apartment in the Bronx, I always know when it's raining because remember the round has to cut through the air. And when there's a lot of uh, a storm brewing or a storm coming, the air gets uh, a lot more moisture. So you can hear the rounds better. So I always know it's raining or there's a storm outside or it's bad when I can hear the rounds from my apartment. Oh, that's crazy. Well, you live near Orchard Beach? I didn't know that. It's not, it's, it's probably like a, you know, four or five miles away, but that's how loud the, the, wow. the shooting. The range is like Orchard Beach, City Island. It's uh, oh, okay. on this tip of land there. And uh, people that live on City Island can hear the gunfire, you know. Wow. Uh, you know, they, they used to go, you know, uh, even into the night, but I think they have to stop shooting at a certain hour. You know? Between you two, between you two, who's the better shot? I was never great with, I was never a great shot. If he's good, he, he's better than me. Cause I, I, I've gotten hundreds. I, I got the, the, the thing a couple of times the, that you shoot a hundred, but I, I, I've also like show, shot like 95 and above. I'd say I'm a 90. It's, it's not that hard to tell you the truth. They give you plenty of time. And, um, you know, most of the points that you get are from a close range. It's the ones that, solidify you getting a uh, hundred is when you're 25 feet away. If you can score those, you know, then that's, uh, when, that's when you're legit. Hey, I, yeah. I, my, uh, my son, Jake's girlfriend, Ali Ladner, she just said, happy birthday, Sergeant Cannon. It's the only one. Yeah. Yeah. Your birthday's oh, coming. What are you today? It's, today. it's my birthday. What your birthday's today? Birthday. Bill, Get out of here, Bill. Yeah. Come on. Happy birthday. I didn't, I didn't even cancel the show for today. Cause that's how much I love doing this show, you know? Bill, hey. happy birthday, Thank man! Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Holy Lord, we gotta, we gotta. Cheers to Bill. Cheers. I'm, dr I'm drinking Poland Spring. I'm drinking water out of my New York Yankees yeah. gas station cup. You know, when, when you talk about the the range, I always say this: the scary guys when you're next door. What are you drinking, tequila? When yeah. You're next door, <laughs> when you're next birthday. To a guy, happy birthday. When you're next to a guy who has a, a giant hole right in the middle of the tongue, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like that guy's serious you know yeah, what i mean you can't, you can't do that thing where you shoot like a, a smiley face even though there's people oh. that can't because if you do they'll put you into they'll take <laughs> you off the range and then send you to psych uh, psychiatric they'll get you evaluated <laughs> if you're if you're a really good shot though they probably put you in like what as like a sniper or something like that or, or no, put you somewhere guys else? that do that in emergency service they can like make a you know they can hit a quarter at like you know I don't know how many yards. Yeah, it's called the grouping. I never had groupings yeah. like that. That's a yeah. great group. I, you know what's funny? For every one person that's a great shot like that, there's like three that are so bad. <laughs> I can't, dude, I can't even I'm talking about you almost want to help them out. Like you just look over to your left and there's somebody that you know they're going to fail. So you just like, pop, pop. You just show two over there to get up in the pass. <laughs> Because, you know, they don't go out. They probably have some administrative job. They're completely out of shape. They have, you know, they only come in out to shoot twice a year. And uh, they're just horrible. They're horrible. It's so, it's bad. Do you think you could shoot with two guns if you, if you, were, if you had two guns? Is that unrealistic in the movies yes, where how people it shoot? it is unrealistic. Well, it's impossible. They're too, they're too, there's too much kickback. Everything. You wouldn't be able to aim, right? You can yeah, do it. I mean, you can let shots go. Are you going to hit anything? That's the question. Yeah. Well, you know who can do it is Keanu Reeves because he's a real marksman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, John, no, that really. John Wick. Have you ever seen the videos of him on the range? He's an actual marksman, you're saying? Yes. He's amazing. You got to see them. Go, go to YouTube and look at his videos on the range. Are you sure you're not just talking about John Wick? No, I'm talking about Keanu. <laughs> that guy, He because there's a way to shoot where you keep the guns real close to you. And at first, you know, when I first saw his video, I thought, wow, he shoots weird. But then when you watch people who are really good, like these marksmen and these uh, military people, because that's who showed them, that's the way they shoot. They get, they keep the gun real close and they just move to the side. Bah, 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 bah. And they're doing all this crazy. And they, one second, he they shoot like seven people around them. Do, 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 do. Like the Mandalorian. It's freaking great. 
Well, that's like what they would do in like the Wild West. They would uh, when they had when they had like actual duels or, or you know shootouts. Uh-huh. They would pull their gun out of their holster and just shoot it immediately after it was out of the holster to buy time, you know, or to 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 be faster. The well, other, if the guys go like this, gonna burn time. You just shoot it right out of the holster. One thing about duels and sh- and those things is that the the a lot of them, especially the early duels, were much closer. They were like three feet apart than what you see in the movies. When you had to load your gun once and you only had one round, a lot of times, almost like in Tombstone, the way they kind of sort of danced around each yeah. other for a minute. That's the way it was. Yeah. Well, Mark, we're, get, we're getting a lot of fans from Duty Ron who are coming on our show. I just want to shout out to them. Uh, Gemma's Journey, Grace, White's P, Matt Sully. Uh, Duty Ron is here. He's watching our show. Thank you, Duty Ron. Thank you for, uh, for sharing. Yeah. What's, he's, wait, what's Duty Ron? Duty Ron has a, uh, a show on uh, YouTube, which he does live. He has 21,000 followers. Oh, cool. All over the world. And uh, he's going to help Mark and I raise our um, profile on, on YouTube. And he's all, a lot of his fans are starting to watch Police Off the Cuff, which we're Dude, I had no idea you guys were on YouTube. I would have put something on my, my well, community page. We just started. We, we were doing it on Facebook. We just oh, started okay. like about a, uh, two weeks ago. Dude, that's now smart. Doing, that's very yeah, smart. We're live on YouTube because Facebook doesn't do anything for No, us. and YouTube too. It will help your channel grow and then eventually. That's what we're trying to do. So you got to give us some of your 80,000 people that watch your Greenwich Village walk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, like I said, if I had known that this was on YouTube, I would have put something on my, like, you know, uh, posted something on my channel. He says, uh, Duty Ron says, Matt Sully's father is a retired NYPD captain. Welcome, NYPD family. Yeah, man. Uh, an honorary NYPD family. An honorary, I guess. you know, Tom, uh, you know, when I met him, I, I also do stand-up comedy. Mark is much better than me, and so is probably Tom Delgado. But they're in the comedy family, and Tom was a real friend. Not, not everyone in comedy is a good guy. There's a lot of dickheads in stand-up comedy. But, <laughs> but, yeah, there are. There are. I met, you know, cops. It's like a, a brotherhood, and, you know, they're more, much closer. Stand-up comedy is a lot of uh, thirsty people. That are, you know, know, it's funny because I think it's generational too. The, the the group of comics that I came up with were a little bit different than the following and the following after that. Um, you know, it was a different, it, it, it's become a little bit more, um, I don't know, the, the, with the addition of Clapter, a lot of people, yeah. that, they, by Clapter, I mean, instead of laughter, you're getting a lot of you know, and then, uh, you know, it's just we're just living in an odd time right now. But there was a much more stronger, I feel anyway. But then again, I don't really know what it's like to be a new comic right now. So I don't know if the community is uh, that strong. I just know that we would never we always gave each other enough space to try out a new joke. And maybe <laughs> there was something that, you know, uh, would be controversial or considered um you know, whatever it is, even if it's if it's racist or whatever, um, sexist, but you give them because the guy's trying to find the funny in this joke. Whereas nowadays, if there's a comic up there and he does something, you know, he, he might he could get actually ridiculed by another comic. This is oh, that's not appropriate or I don't I don't know, like what you're saying up there. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Get away from me. Yeah, let me do. Let me try my joke. If it's not funny, let me get make it yeah. funny. Listen, that's what I've heard amongst the younger comic. It was never like that when I was uh, when I was younger, and and uh, also to the community that I grew up with in, in comedies, I'm still friends with them today. You know, we're, we're, wait, what year did you start, Mark? Ninety four or five in New York City. Yeah, so ninety that would be. I'm horrible at math, but I think it's like 40 years ago. Um, no. <laughs> no, it's like it's 30, 2005, it's 30, yeah, it's 30, about 30 years ago. 30 years no, ago. no, no, it's, it's 25 years ago. Yeah, it, it's more like 23 years. I always say 23 years. We lost our cat. What happened? You got a tour to go to? No, so I was trying to fix. I was trying to fix a light. Is that a tour group that showed up at your door? They want you to take them to the village? Yeah, pretty much. That's all that I've read. It's all, was, the only people. What, what was your weirdest experience with a, a tour group? Or I think I, I don't know if I told this story last time. Did I tell you the story about that woman who heckled me about about being a lawyer? No. 
So this is kind of funny. This goes back to what you were saying, Mark, about you, about me being your son or whatever. I, I was, uh, I was doing a tour in, uh, in Chinatown. I was finishing the tour and I was in Foley Square near the courthouses, right? And I was talking to my group and I was like, all right. Uh, and there was this woman who was like hovering near my group. She must've been like in her mid forties or mid fifties even. Anyways, she's, she's hovering. And I'm like, all right, so this, this is Foley Square. It's not, as, it's not as cool as Chinatown. It's a little boring compared to Chinatown. And then this woman who was walking around just goes, boring, boring. This isn't boring. And she starts yelling at me in front of my group. I'm like, oh, God. She's like, this isn't boring. They film Law and Order here. She starts getting very offended. She's wearing like a suit, too. And she's well-dressed. So I was like, who is this person? Anyways, I was like, look, ma'am, I didn't mean any trouble, whatever. I was trying to just diffuse it. She's like, this isn't boring. And she's just yelling. And everyone's like, what the hell's going on? Eventually, I go, look, ma'am, I used to be a lawyer. I, I didn't. I don't, I don't mean to offend you or anything like that. And then she stops in her tracks after I said that. And she goes, you used to be a lawyer? <laughs> and then she goes, man, it looks like things are going really well for you. <laughs> in front of my entire group. And then I was like, I can't believe she just said that to me. I just wanted to completely unload on her. But before I could, this this like woman in my group, this young woman in my group just let her have it. And it's like, you're pathetic. Are you, what kind of life do you live? You're dead. And the woman just ran away with her tail tucked between her legs. <laughs> Did you comp anybody? Did you comp everybody for that tour? Like, I mean, I was hoping that they would have some pity for, yeah, exactly. Please tip, please tip. Uh, but no, it was it was a pretty funny. Uh, it was Tom, a pretty- this, did you, were you on the show Billions? I did. I did. A, I did a little role there. Yeah. Someone just asked uh, Tom, did you like working on Billions? Uh, jo- Joshua. Joshua just asked that. Oh yeah, it was great. I did a scene with Paul Giamatti. It was pretty cool. He actually used to. I I had met him before though because he works out at. He worked out at the gym that I worked out at the boxing gym that I worked out in uh, Madison Square area, and so I had met him before randomly. But uh, but yeah, I, I did a scene with him there. It was pretty cool. It was a, it's a cool show. You know, Dan Soder is on that show, the the comedian Dan Soder. Yes. Did you did you have any lines in the show? Yeah, or? I had some lines. I had some lines, and I did a scene with uh, with Giamatti. It was cool. It was a fun experience. Um, yeah, it's like a pretty popular show, I guess. I don't what know. Did you play? Huh? What did you play? I played the husband. Uh, I played a couple. It was me and this woman played a couple, and we were buying uh, Paul Giamatti's house in the show. Like Paul Giamatti's family, they're selling their house, and we were the couple who was like seriously looking at their house. Mm-hmm. And I guess the storyline is they didn't know if they wanted to sell or whatever. And after they met us, they didn't want to sell anymore. <laughs> uh, I thought you played like a uh, a lawyer who quit being a lawyer and turned into a tour guide. I, yeah, I played a failed lawyer. That was my backstory. In my head, I carried that as my backstory. So I did work that in. <laughs> when, when people that are in your tour group, when they find out you were a lawyer and you're doing that, do they... Do they I don't normally tell people. I, I don't always tell people. Sometimes I do. I always I always make fun of myself. Obviously, yeah. I mean, some before someone else does. Well, so I'm like, yeah, self deprecating humor. It always of course, you, right? of course. And you also got to beat people to the punch because they're just like, man, this guy's a loser. Let me say it before they do at least. Uh-huh. So yeah, I, I mention it pretty much every time. But I, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I don't. And but it, it is kind of funny. I think it's kind of funny. I only I only talk about it so much because I think it's actually kind of funny. People think I'm like bragging or anything. It's not anything to brag about. But I don't know. There's quite a few lawyers that are actually comics. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Greg Giraldo was a very he was a he was actually a pretty pretty amazing lawyer. He uh, he went to Harvard Law. He worked at one of the biggest firms in the world. Dimitri Martin dropped out of law school. Mm-hmm. The amazing Jonathan was a lawyer. Uh, yeah, there's a few. Wow. Yeah, I mean there there is a level of intelligence that's required to be a good comic. You have to uh, be smart enough to to dull it down, your intelligence, dull your intelligence down, but clever enough to um, sneak in that, uh, sneak in that. Don't tell me that was your fault. It was, but I I don't know why. (laughs) You only have a hundred and something shows and you don't know to turn your ringer off. I think it's somebody who's probably trying to get in touch with me because of this yeah. freaking thing that we're doing now with, with staying live on YouTube. Duty Ron, Joe and Bonnie, welcome. Duty one, the joy catcher, welcome. So a lot of these, these are all Duty Ron's fans coming to watch us. If you haven't subscribed to uh, Police Off the Cuff on YouTube, please do so. And that goes for um, Tom Delgado's 80,000 fans in his Gre- for his Greenwich Village walk. Greenwich Village walk. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I, I, I can check it right. I don't think that's right. But yeah, I did get oh, a yeah, good no, amount. Let's, let's, let's see another walk you you're have. Getting, um, 
you're getting uh, when people watch the tours, is this a place that they can donate on your? Um... So what I do now have is I have a Patreon. I have a Patreon that I that I have where people can go and become a patron, and that's helped a ton. I mean, I I really uh, I really appreciate that. So I usually just steer people to the Patreon. You guys have a Patreon, right? Yeah. We'll talk yeah. about it in a few, but there's never a moment that in the middle of all this COVID, you're like, you know what? I'll just grab a case or two and do some criminal defense or whatever. <laughs> no, I actually thought about doing uh, temp legal work. I, I thought about because it pays really well, but the hours are brutal. Uh, and I, I didn't really want to do it. I'd rather live. I'd rather live modestly than <laughs> uh, than than. All right. Have... So Bill's excited because we're watching you walk. Tom, through this, this is you walking in Midtown. It looks yeah. dead, though. What happened? It is. It was. This is all during COVID, man. Like everything's dead. And you're not wearing a mask, which I'm very annoyed with you. By I have it around my neck. I lowered That's it for not the good tour. enough. Damn it! You have to have it above your nose. Uh, yeah. No. I believe me. I gotten some. I've gotten some angry comments, but I always. I always start with it on, and I just pull it down for the tour so people can understand me better. And also, I'm not around people. But I get, te- I get, te- oh, I know, I know, I know. But uh, people do give me, give me shit sometimes. Like uh, I, cause I'd live stream some tours with someone else who has a bigger channel than me and people will be watching live. So they'll always comment on the dumb masks. It's uh, kind of hard to talk um, or do like something like that to be recorded. If you're, um, you know, the, your audio is screwed up because you're wearing a mask. Well, also, people can't understand you because they can't see your mouth. Who is this yeah. bicycle crew? Was that the Hell's Angels coming down 42nd? <laughs> yeah, what was that? That was, uh, you know, they, they was like those rides. I think a bunch of teenagers, they do these rides, I think, uh, uh-huh. fairly fairly regularly. And they just, like, you know, hundreds what of kids. What you notice here is that this is the city. I don't know what date it is, but it's obviously in the middle of the COVID. And yeah. in the area that you're walking in right now, there would be 100,000 people around. Yes. Yes, it's, it's, Times Square know. is insane. It's insane how empty Times Square is right now. It's 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 mind boggling. It's where you see it the most, the most stark contrast. Well, that all the theaters that are there, the theater district is closed. Yeah. The theater oh, district's closed. closed. Tourism's dead, and the yeah. offices are all closed. All the office buildings Especially are closed. Real estate is going to be a big problem. I don't think anybody yeah. um, has an. Uh, I'm sure they have an idea, but they're probably scared to death because. A lot, well, you know what you need? You need these husbands that are home right now. Once this the vaccine comes out to, you know, want to get back in the office because they're the ones who need the, the, the trips because they have girls they haven't seen in uh, in months, maybe a year right now. All your little, uh, you know, your mistresses <laughs> all over the country on your business trips. You know, they miss you. We got to get back to business here. That's why I'm sure I'm sure those are the first trips some people are going to take. I know, but you got to get back in the office first. And I'm sub- I mean, to be honest, though, I I wouldn't be surprised if most people have already made those trips. To be quite honest, I don't know how much uh, how many trips you can actually do right now, though. People you know, are, people have been tri- some people have been traveling. I mean, uh, it depends on where you travel to and who you're seeing and whatnot. But uh, I mean, like uh, I guess now now the big thing is it's gotten a lot worse than it was a couple months ago. So that's yeah, one of the reasons why. A lot worse, yeah. Yeah. But a few months ago, it wasn't so bad, and and people traveled. I've traveled. I've traveled to once. I traveled. I traveled. This is I went Tom, to, Tom. This is you in Greenwich Village right now. Yeah. And how many? How many? How many uh, views does it have? It doesn't have eighty thousand views. It has eighty thousand. No, it does not. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. You're making that up. I'm not making it up. Show me the eighty thousand. <laughs> well, Bill, Bill is out. helping get closer to eighty thousand either way because he's playing it right now. Yeah, he's playing it right now in the middle of the of the uh, pod, podcast. I, I wanted you to comment on it, but you're not. Uh, well, this is this is Greenwich Village. So what, basically, I'll comment and let you know what I do. So what I've been doing, and this is one of the interest, the interesting part of all this, is I've been trying to like make a living during COVID because tourism's dead, stand up isn't doing anything, acting stuff is pretty much dead. I'm, I mean, I'm going in for auditions here and there, but not much. I'm doing a commercial this week actually, which is kind of cool, the first thing in a while. But uh, but aside from that, like it's hard to get. Uh, job. So what I started doing was just doing these tours. I, once a week, I'll go out and I'll film pretty much a tour, maybe like a 20, 30 minute tour with, with a gimbal. A friend of mine will hold the gimbal uh-huh. and uh, and I'll just basically do a tour and talk about what I'm looking at and whatnot. And it's a shortened version. And uh, and then I'll put it up. And slowly I've started to build a little community of people who like them and who, who enjoy them and uh, started the Patreon. Some people like to donate through PayPal and Venmo and it's, it's helped support me. And then I do the live stream tours. Yeah. And those those help as well. But that's that's pretty much how I'm making my money now is through through the YouTube. When you look at the video that that we just showed right now, it's interesting because we've been through so many phases of this uh, Corona. Yeah. 
so in this video that you're showing right now, there's a, there's a, it's almost like there's some people who feel like wearing a mask and there's, you know, they're like, uh, and then there's other people who are like, I'm outdoors right now. I don't have to wear a mask. I'm six feet away from you, which is all changed. If you go, if you did that same video right now, there's nobody walking around without a mask, really. You, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody without a mask right now. Well, at least a mask around their chin, like they have it well, down temporarily, you know? Even, I'm telling you, I'm, well, I'm in, I'm in Midtown almost every day. And uh, I remember the time where I'd get off, you know, I'd get out and I just, you know, when I saw a block that I could walk down without having to have it, I would put it down on my side. But I wouldn't even do that anymore right now. Um, because we're in a huge spike and because I just don't want to have to deal with anybody who might see me without my mask, you know what I'm saying? I'm not... Tom, you're right. There's not 80,000. You have 88,000 views on, on that Greenwich Village walk. Are you serious? I swear to God. Duty that's, Ron just said he pulled it up. You have 88,000 views. That's news to me, man. I think YouTube's cheating you out of money. Can we get some so? of that money? Did I mention, <laughs> did I wow. mention how obsessed Bill is with numbers? Yeah, Bill loves his numbers, man. Because well, numbers, numbers equal money. And if no one's watching you, you're not going to make any money. That's wow. true. He's true. He's living. He's uh, listen. He's he's speaking sense. Dollars and we cents. also we uh, we also have a Patreon and we have like three tiers. Uh, you know, you can get on our Patreon www.patreon.com slash police off the cuff. And right now we only have thirty three members. We're trying to jack it up. You know, we're trying to. We're even giving away coffee cups. We didn't get them yet, though. <laughs> oh, you got eighty eight. You guys got eighty eight patrons. That's great. No, 30, no 33, 33. Oh, 33. Oh, thirty three. Yeah. We're trying to crank it up, you know. You got to constantly promote, you know. Yeah, it's but, tough, man. We're gonna we're gonna be showing off the mugs soon, uh, once we get them, and they're gonna go to our Patreon subscribers as a way to, uh, you know, holiday gift for us to say thank you. They're really really nice. Um, so as far as comedy goes right now, what do you have you been getting up? A little bit, man. I, I uh, like I said, I've been focusing a lot on the channel and in, in the last like six or five months and I'm trying to build that. And it's worked. I mean, it's funny how you put time into something and it, it grows. Uh, but I mean, I'm, I'm doing a show tomorrow in the Upper West Side in like an outdoor space. Um, and um, I don't know, you know, a handful of shows. You think it's over? Uh there's it's some looking like it. they talk to like and and they're like nah, it's dead it's done it's not looking good man if you are trying to get up and do do spots it's, it's not talking about like in the future Even no i don't think so i think it'll come back i think i think once you know once we're able to i mean maybe like you know madison square garden or whatever but but restaurants are going to open their little venues are going to open and yeah some people are going to be like i don't want to go near other people but other people will be like please god let me see something i'm so right. tired of being inside so well, the, vaccine, the vaccine is the great equalizer. Because yes. And that'll help people it comes out and it's yeah. for a couple of, it's been out. Once the vaccine has been out long enough where you're going to stick your head up and look, well, there's not a line to get it anymore. Uh, let's go. And business yeah. is going to open whether they get the okay or not. Cause they're already opening up right now. A lot of them. And once this vaccine hits and it, I figure by April, by the middle of April, if you're, if you're not ahead, a step ahead of this, you're going to lose. You're going to lose the whole everybody because they're going to open up. They're going to be like, you know, we're doing it. It's uh, the vaccines out because once the responsibility is, uh, you know, it's available for you, you should have taken it. Then it's just like anything else. You know, it's your responsibility at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, I think that's you're right. I think once the once the vaccines out long enough, people are going to be like, come on, come on, come on, open up and things will slowly start to open up. And that includes like venues that, and, and venues that are included like restaurants. Like I, I ran a show at a restaurant that had a downstairs space. Obviously, people are skittish to go to downstairs basements and stuff. But I think after a few months, people are going to be like, yeah, just let us in. 50% um, capacity, whatever. I've got a, a great show at the uh, Poco and yeah. Avenue B. Yeah. I, I love doing that show. I did. That yeah, it's a, it was a fun show. It was a great show. Two, three times. Yeah. Yeah. We were able to put it on at, the you know, like Fashion Week at Bowery Ballroom a couple of times. Like it had a nice little following. We got some great comics. Yeah, so no, it was great. It was a great, great show. I mean, yeah. I like the, you know, in, being in the basement, the crowd was like right on top of you. Yeah. Well, that's one of the reasons why I think it might be a little, people might be a little skittish yeah. to go in so close to each other. But, yeah. you know, after a little while, man, I think people will eventually, you know, 
I don't know. Well, when you get on stage now, do you feel rusty, your material? Yeah, I do feel a little rusty. And I haven't been able to write. That's another thing. Like, I haven't been writing because I'm not yeah. doing that much, you know, I'm not doing that many spots. So what's the point of, like, sitting down to write for an hour a day when I'm, when I'm not doing that many spots? So I end up doing old jokes. I end up just doing, like, goofy crowd work. And I just feel a little bit more disconnected because of that, you know? Where do you live again? I live in Ridgewood, Queens. How's that neighborhood? Any crime over there? I love Ridgewood, man. I love spike this neighborhood. Crime over there? Not, not really. I mean, I don't think there's been a spike. I mean, there's there's some stuff here. It's not, there are parts of it that are a little sketchy, but I think there was like a shooting here. Uh, you know, uh, like at the beginning of COVID or right before, but uh, that I, I mean, right near us. But I don't think so. I think it's I think it's okay. I don't know if there is. I don't see it. Yeah, this this this. Uh... There's spikes everywhere. It just so happens that, you know, most of the areas that are affected are the same ones that, um, you know, are, are, are very, they don't want you there. They, they're, they're very pro to fund the police. So you're kind of sort of stuck in between this. Uh, Which neighborhoods are seeing the biggest spikes? Uh, of I mean, of uh, COVID? No, no, of crime. Oh, of crime. Well, it's the, the, the ghetto neighborhoods, the Brooklyn Seven one seven three seven five seven zero. What's that? Is that like East New York or something? Yeah, or? Uh, you it's know. the same exact places that were all always- died Bed Stuy. You know, places Lee like Lee. that. They're getting crazy amount of shooting. But Bed Stuy was like, I mean, Bed Stuy has been pretty gentrified. I guess that's a that's a return well, because now been- you're going to see these comics running for the for the exits. <laughs> that live in the Bed Stuy. Very quiet in the neighborhood. Right? Be like, oh, I didn't know it was like this. You know. Yeah. I remember, <laughs> I remember being in Washington Heights and watching this white dude walk down the street, no shirt after like a jog. And I'm, and then now that same guy, he's got, he's covered up. He's got, obviously it's cold, but they got the mask on and like, you know, yeah. <laughs> stick out too much right now. Now's, a th- now's not the time to be sticking out. Yeah, no, that's true. That you is know? true. But you know, the big I- problem is too, is with the subways, the ridership is down 40%. And that means that the MTA, who were broke before, are like triple broke now. You know what I mean? And they don't have enough. They're going to have to cut service. Well, they're talking about like passing different types of taxes on things. Like, for example, they're talking about like a delivery tax. Yeah, Yeah, packages. They're talking about that. They're talking about different ways of trying to offset these kind of losses and costs. And I'll tell you why. Because the same people that uh, order a thousand packages a day, if I need one package and I'm in the Bronx and I barely can afford to get my medication here, you're going to charge me $3 extra. Yeah. So here's the problem. They, they wanted to um, let the people on the train for free because they were going to do this thing in the city where they um, congestion pricing, congestion pricing. Yeah. And right. that all went to crap because of COVID. It was the launch date was supposed to be already when if you go lower than 61st Street, it was going to be like, I don't know, like an eleven dollar surcharge or something like that, like added to. But that all went out the window. So now you're caught between not charging people on the train. And even if you wanted to enforce that, nobody's really taking the subway because nobody's going anywhere to now. You you, you have no resources. you got to see because for a long time, nobody was writing summonses either. Um, and now you see the same traffic agent go around the block maybe 15 times looking for cars because they're trying to create and generate some revenue right now because there's no money coming from the federal government. You know, at least right now, maybe when the new administration gets in, they're going to change that. But <laughs> there's nothing coming. They better hope that there's something in that in the new stimulus thing that they want to pass if it passes, because, you know, they, they counted on uh, destroying the city and then the federal government was going to step in and pay for it. That's the way they're going to punish them. And they're not sending them the money. So now you're all you got is your tax money and people are fleeing in droves. The biggest the biggest percentage of the people who pay the most taxes are, are the richest people in the city. And they were all leaving. Yeah. 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 The city's going to go way 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 down before it's able to come back up what do you think how much longer do you think it's going to continue to decline well until the know, last- i think with uh, like with 9 11 it took 10 years for the city to come back this is 10 times more devastating than 9 11 because it's 
Look at look at what it's done to the the restaurant business. I mean, it's just so how many restaurants have just had to close? Yeah, you know, yeah. Coogan's in Washington Heights, which we all loved because it was a cop bar, and it was one of the best bars uh, uh, in in Washington Heights. He said closed. He was paying twenty thousand a month, it's so ridiculous. he couldn't afford to ride out the storm because that's two forty two hundred forty thousand a year with bringing no money in at all. Yeah, you know, with insurance, this that he or you know his his rent. It was twenty k a month. So I how many people can afford to pay two hundred forty thousand dollars being closed? You can't I think do the it. idea with a lot of these places is uh, with a lot of the the, the, the idea is that ah, if you own a business, you'll figure out how to open up another one. You know, you'll you'll find the resources because you're a hustler. You know what I'm saying? And the people that rely on on on, on these other type of menial work, they'll they'll find it. It's already out there, but um, it's a poor way to think, you know, because I. I I don't understand how they expect um, any any of these cities, not just here. You know, this is going on in LA too. People are leaving in droves and making a big scene on their way out. Yeah, but you know that what you're saying too also has like, it's reflected in the policy towards small business too. I mean, there's always been a very, I mean, maybe not as much in New York as other places, but even in New York, that's been one of the complaints of small business owners is that there really is like this like social Darwinism. Like you go out there, it's survival of the fittest, you know, if you can't hack it, you know, whatever, what can you do? That's the rent. You got to pay it. But in some cases, like the way the rent goes out of control in some of these neighborhoods without any relief or out any kind of like help from the city or state government, there's no amount of empanadas you can sell at a small business that would allow you to pay $17,000 in rent a month. No, there you go with the reset. You reset. Yeah. And when you reset it, then all of a sudden you have an apartment that's for rent that you were going to get three thousand dollars a month for, and it's a studio, and now all of a sudden nobody's coming to see it, so you're back down to twelve hundred right now. Take whatever yeah. you get for a year. Sure, but in terms of businesses, though, the business on the business end, like commercial real estate, so the people who will or who can move and who have been moving into those expensive places are franchises, mm -hmm. because franchises can open and take a loss that way because it's the the rent is being paid by corporate office, you know. Yeah. I challenge you that thought, and I offer you this. You're in a commercial area. Now, are you going to open up a franchise store in a, in a, like on, right off of Lexington Avenue or, or Park Avenue where all those commercial real estates are? No, because you know they're not coming back. I'm not going to make that investment. So who's going to try and take a stab at that real estate when nobody wants it is the small business. But herein lies the rub. They have a, a thing in the city, as a, a, a tax law, where you're – you're supposed to be able to get um, a fair equal value to compare yourself. Uh, so when you rent out, you can hold out and not have to pay taxes on that property until you get what the fair value of it for that neighborhood is. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a bunch of businesses that are going to remain closed waiting like they do until they have somebody come in with this astronomical figure when nobody's coming. Yeah. Yeah, well, well especially not, in not Manhattan. Like, you know, the, the Starbucks and the big, uh, the Dwayne Reeds. Yeah, they can the city banks. The city banks, they can pay those rents, but the mom and pop stores. No, they can't. That and the, that's, they're the blood and the heart and soul of the, yeah. of the city. And culturally, you know, people love that kind of stuff. They can't afford those rents, so no. they're going to go out of business. Yeah, know? well, and they also, they, they weren't able to afford the rents before COVID. I mean, this is just making it worse. I mean, like they were, this was happening before. I mean, people were talking like Gem Spa, for example, which closed in the East Village. It closed in like March or in April. It was about to close before this all hit. Which one I mean, is that? Huh? Which one is that? Gem Spa was on the corner of St. Mark's and, and Second Ave. It's that place that like, you know, Madonna used to go to, Basquiat, all these people. They, they, I, I would go there. Yeah. When I lived in the East Village, I'd go there. They, I, I love that place. It was like a little, it was a bodega. It was a tiny yeah. bodega and their yeah. rent was seven. Yeah. What's that? You hang out in the shower room over there? <laughs> it actually, it wasn't a spa. It was a bodega. The name was Gem Spa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it wasn't an actual spa. It was like a bodega, but it was named Gem Spa. And, uh, and it was like a tiny bodega that had for its rent $17,000 a month. Really? It was, it was tiny, man. This building, this, this room must have been like maybe 30 feet by, by like 10 feet. It wasn't big. And it was like 17, 17,000 a month. Probably a weed spot too. Yeah, maybe. I mean, uh, it was, uh, but it was, it was definitely, it had been there since like the early 1900s and it closed. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, I don't, when I see those businesses closed that have been around for a long time, like Bill mentioned earlier about that the 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 car guitar shop in the village, it breaks yeah. my heart. Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, those because those things are literally there. The community, the community that forms around them, the people that know them, the owners, the managers, the employees are all there for years because they feel a loyalty to it. It's not just a job, but that's the problem. Like you, you replace it with a Starbucks or an IHOP or something. Right. Those people are just there for the paycheck. They're not staying put. They have no loyalty to the neighborhood. All the money goes to the corporate office. It doesn't go back into the community. Like it's a complete suck on the neighborhood. It's not invested in the community. So that that to me is what I think is the biggest danger. Like you have some Tom, they also had a chance to get Amazon in Queens. And that was the one of the biggest faux pas ever by uh, the politics of Queens that they didn't let Amazon. It was going to I forget the uh, thousands of jobs it was going to bring. And they were good jobs. They were like, you know, 80 to 100 thousand dollar a year jobs. Mm hmm. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think the problem is with, with, with issues like that, Amazon, on the surface, you're right. Because you can quantify salaries. You can quantify the amount of jobs. You can quantify that stuff. What I think would be the problem of letting an Amazon like that in, in that case, is the stuff you cannot quantify, which is what would happen to the neighborhood, who it starts moving in. Tom, you sound like a NYU economics professor. <laughs> <laughs> Not a, a tour guide with a law degree. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's true. Like there are certain things you can't quantify, like the diversity of a neighborhood, the the uh, oper the the rent, the rent like diversity, the socioeconomic and, and ethnic diversity, all these different things that are harder to quantify that would be affected by that. Uh, you know, because on the surface, a lot of these neighborhoods that have skyrocketed in rent, it looks good. I mean, they're safer neighborhoods, the 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 median income is higher, all that stuff, but they lose something in the process. And that's the type of thing that's harder to put your finger on. Well, you know, Duty Ron just said this pandemic is affecting some and some are flourishing and prospering. Yeah. Like the Amazons, the Google. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you notice Bezos hasn't you haven't heard a peep from Bezos for the last six months, because he, if he said anything, people would be like, you need to keep your mouth shut, buddy, because you've doubled your, your wealth in the last nine months. That's insane. Isn't that incredible? He's made 90. He's made over 90 billion dollars during the pandemic. Those, that, those, that's like not even a real number. That sounds like a joke number. He's so, made that in the last nine months. That's we're crazy. Gonna, we're going to probably see a trillionaire in our lifetime. Well, he's already hitting close to 200 billion. Like, I mean, I, it's, it's pretty insane. Like, uh, they're, no, they're saying that the, it will be like probably the first trillion dollar company. Like an uh, actual company is going to be worth trillion well, dollars. Apple, I think, already did that, didn't they? they? Did. I thought it made it to 700 uh, well, billion. I thought I don't they know. were at a trillion. Yeah. I don't know. I could be wrong. Anyway, I, I just you know, know that, something, not just yeah. that. How about Facebook? And they're a billion dollar company, but the guy has the worst haircut I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> See that guy's haircut? He's a billionaire and he's got like a, a $15 haircut. Yeah, well, he could he could probably just pay pay all of his bots to just change people's opinions about his haircut if he wanted to. You know, Jeff Bezos is going to be sitting there one day when he hits a trillion, and his phone's going to ring, and he's going to go hello, and he goes, "Yeah, what's up? This is Bill Cannon. I just want you to know you hit a trillion." <laughs> That's right. I've been keeping track of your numbers. He's like, what? Who? What are you talking about? We bought so many money. I've been keeping track of your numbers. <laughs> yeah, he's about to hit a trillion. <laughs> no, he'll get it. He'll get into the building using his badge, the badge trick that he has, and he'll tell him to his face. You know, I, I did a show with him, Mark, once, and uh, there was that the old um, police building uh, that's now Two, condo. 240 Center Street. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, he walks up to the doorman and he says, uh, can I come in there and shoot a scene? And they go, no, he goes and he shows him his tour guide badge i first of all that's not true bill i did not show my tour guide badge. i we we went up me and, me and bill did this video and i and i went up to this place i wanted to shoot a little bit in front of it and i and i go up and i knock and the guy's like yeah what do you want and i was like oh can i shoot something and he's like no i just closed the door in my face so then i go over to bill and i tell him what just happened and bill goes all right let me try so he knocks on the door the guy opens the door he's like what Bill flashes his badge. The guy opens the door like it was like a genie or something. He goes, come right in. <laughs> <laughs> come right in, please. You know, meet my daughter, you know, whatever the hell. He's like, I was like, what the hell is this? Have my, my daughter, marry my daughter. Yeah, marry my daughter, please. But no, we went in and he was, he actually was pretty game. He shot a little, a little bit with us. It's kind of fun. Yeah. yeah it's well, fun that, was a, that was a great episode. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I was with a couple of comics when, go ahead. 
Oh, no, I took him up to Rayo's and show him. Yeah, you took me up I... to Rayo's. You took me up to the to the to your your, your station. Yeah, uh, Rayo's was where the murder was inside the bar there when the guy uh, cursed out the uh, the singer. The girl yeah. was singing, and he cursed. He said, "Hey, why don't you shut up, your wailing slut?" And this old guy said, "Hey, have some respect, buddy." And then he hit this guy with a lot of expletive deletives, and the old guy just pulled out his gun and shot him dead right at the bar. Yeah. I don't know why I find this funny. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> you become desensitized to everything I but numbers. Desensitized. It's Only funny. numbers get your blood going. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I was driving with a couple of comics once to a gig. And uh, they were African-American, by the way, which helps the story. And um, I got pulled over. I forget what it, for whatever reason it was. But the, the cop came over to my car. I, I, you know, I tend them at the time. I was still on the job. I showed him. Tend them means you show him your ID and your, your shield. Uh -huh. And the guy was like, all right, have a good night. And I said, all right, thanks a lot, man. And we went on. And then the other two guys, uh, my comedian friends of mine, they were like, they were so nervous. They're like, so what's going to happen now? I'm like, what do you mean what's going to happen? We're going to get out of here. And I put it in the park and I, and I started taking off. They're like, yeah, but is the cop going to come back? They're like, what's going to happen? Do I have to get out? And I'm like, no, relax, bro. Everything's fine. They couldn't, they couldn't grasp. And that's when it, it won. It, it, at that moment right now, it really, like, I really had it in, like an idea of what it's like to be a civilian nowadays without the shield, to be a uh, person of color without the shield, because they were re they were legitimately shook. Like, yeah. we're, we're gonna this, this is going to derail our plans. Yeah, we're going to yeah. be here for a while. We might get arrested, even though we weren't doing nothing wrong. So it, 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 was, it was, we made a big joke about it. Well, you know, my, other, uh, my students in college, they used to say, Professor, what happens when you get pulled over? I said, well, I show them my shield. I said, uh... Where do you work? I said, I work in Manhattan North Homicide Squad. And the, the cops go, we are not worthy to pull you <laughs> <laughs> And then they let me go. <laughs> They're like, you're full of shit, Professor. <laughs> you get so cocky, too. I remember one time I was driving back from a gig in Connecticut, and I got pulled over by a female uh, uh, trooper, Connecticut officer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um She's like, do you know why I pulled you over? I was like, I don't know. I was speeding. Maybe I'm not wearing my seatbelt. I think I might have not. I gave her like a whole list just making a joke while I was handing her my ID. And she was like, what's this? And she puts it on the roof of my car. And I was like, oh, my God, this girl's serious right now. I'm not going to be too cocky. And so I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you get a ticket? No, no, no. Oh, okay. So is that is that a thing? Is like an unwritten rule that you don't get if you're a cop getting pulled over by a cop, you're not going to get a ticket, you get, right? You get courtesy usually, but you know, usually there's a way to be pulled over. You have to be humble, right? You can't. I I was joking about that. You know, you, you have to be humble. You have to be very polite and humble. Not everybody's humble, though. Yeah, I mean, if you get a guy who's a dick, you know, he's like, "Hey, what you pull me over for? I'm on the job." You know, the cop may write you. You know. Yeah, I used to work. Uh, a four to like I was in a squad, so you do two four to ones, four p.m. to one in the morning, and then on the th on the second one you have to be back in the morning for eight o'clock. So on that night, if I didn't sleep over or make an arrest, I would be flying home to sleep in my own bed. And I lived in Flushing, and I'd go over the it's like the Flushing overpass right past the uh, City Field, mm -hmm. and I'd go there, and there'd always be a cop there, and I'd, I'd get pulled over, and they'd be like, "Dude, don't you know my?" freaking car already i mean come on I'm a, and like i'm getting annoyed at him you know because every time i got pulled over, i'd be like yeah it's me again i'm doing a four to one turn around i gotta be up in the morning and we're not talking i'm not doing 100 miles an hour i'm going like five six miles over the speed limit you know what i'm saying wow they pull you over for that that's messed well, that's up what he's doing there he's he works the midnights and he sits there and he tries to write his summonses but at some point dude it's like uh, you know remember me Remember my car? The you same know? guy pulled you over multiple times. It was over every week. Wow, dude, that's it's messed not up. the point, but it was just like the whole thing just became ridiculous, bro. It's like, dude, enough. You know what I'm saying? Remember the car. <laughs> you know my car. Leave me alone. <laughs> Denise right. got Ultima with the two baby seats, bro. It's me, man. <laughs> you got to get one of the police, uh, the, you got to use your police scanner or whatever thing. I just wanted to leave my shield out the window when I was driving. It's me again, you freaking annoyance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
I, I the, the, those guys, man, uh, God bless them. Cause you know, that's a scary, scary job they do. I, I, I hope for the day when they, when they get rid of car stops really, cause it's just such a scary thing to do. You mean to go up to someone's window, not knowing what's going to happen? Oh yeah. It's, it's unbelievable that people were still doing that. You know, I think that we should be a way to rather than get in your chase, I should be able to demobilize uh, mobilize your car just by something an electrical thing, shoot it at it. You slow down, you pull over, you know, cause there's people that drive insane on the highway. Now they just passed the law, by the way. Um, I think it was Westchester County just passed the law that if you're involved in drag racing or going excessively over the speed limit, it's a felony and they're going to impound your car. Oh, wow. But they just fell in line with this in Rockland County and the other uh, jurisdictions that already had that. Well, there's also a bunch of, I don't know, a bunch of states have a do not chase, do not chase laws. Like there aren't speed, high speed chases. Like they allow the, they take all the information or whatever. And they're like, we're not getting into a high speed chase. It's just done. And they catch them later or whatever. They have that in New York. You're not allowed to chase. Yeah. Anything. You know, they'll call off, they'll call it off, but it also depends on what it is. Right. Are you going after a stolen car or does that car come back to uh, be on the lookout for? Right. 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 You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, if it's a property crime that you're not going to chase because I was a sergeant when I was on patrol, if they were chasing someone for nonsense, I would call off the pursuit because if you didn't and they killed the family, of yeah. four, they'd be looking to sue the sergeant. Because yeah. He didn't terminate the pursuit, you know? Right. But if it's, there was one where this guy carjacked a car, then carjacked, boat jacked a boat. And chief of department, Anna Moan, was on the air and some sergeant or lieutenant said, terminate that pursuit. And Anna Moan said, car five, keep the pursuit going. <laughs> and they caught the guy. <laughs> wow. That's when you get into that game. Um, what was it? Uh, Grand Theft Auto. Yes. <laughs> to me, I have this theory that a lot of these people that do these crimes are so addicted. They never did a study, as far as I know. They play these games so much that they actually act them out in like real life. They get the firearm, they'll do the stolen car. And then when you watch the way they are, it, it almost looks like it's you're right in the game. That's what I think. Yeah. Well, wasn't there one? There was a guy uh, who got shot on his on his like Instagram live. And he was he was getting chased and in, in, in the Instagram live and he's basically like I'm not going to jail I'm not going he got out of his car right. and right. Was, yeah, I love that one. crazy basically like and he had I, I don't know if he had a gun I'm pretty sure he did but he, he was pretty much just saying I'm gonna go I'm going for it. and he got out of his car and re started running and he got gunned down yeah that makes me giddy when I watch oh, shit. Like that, it makes me giddy I get so I get tickled pink I'm just ooh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> you see, did you see there was several videos of yesterday's incident, but there was one that had nothing to do with the news or the police. It was someone's phone and it showed the whole shooting and uh, the cops were far away and that guy got hit in the head. He, he got, got hit in the, in the head? head. Yeah. And he, he, you know, he was killed on the scene, but he was firing at the cops and they, they the two I could see were on the, were left of him. And they had they were behind cover, and there was a couple standing behind this like pole, and they had cover. As soon as the guy went down, this one cop was superhero, grabbed people and had them, you know, took them all to a safe place. I mean, yeah. it was textbook training. They would they took cover. They didn't, you know, empty their gun. They fired methodically. They took aim and tried to, you know, hit the guy because sometimes when you're in a gunfight people tend to just fire rounds as fast as they can. But they, I think, recognize the fact that they were a good distance away. Well, that's the two six quickly, right there. Anything, you know. The two six guys are pros. The women I do. don't know if they're from the two six. One of I may have been from Community Affairs. And there was a sergeant who was in St. Luke's Hospital. He ran there. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then there was someone else. So I don't know who actually, where they were from, the guys that actually shot. Do you guys, you should try to get that guy on your show. They, uh, uh, they, they can't come on. Because they're active? Yeah, they're active, yeah. Oh. They, uh, that St. John's Cathedral is, is uh, comparable to St. Patrick's Cathedral, by it's, the way. Well, it's one of the biggest cathedrals in the entire world. It's beautiful. It's huge. It's, it's yeah, like if it, you go there, there's a scaffolding. Yeah. It blows up. And what they do is they move, you know, they just clean it. 
Yeah. And by the time they get around the whole thing, it's the new year and they got to start. Right. Well, you know that technically that the cathedral is not actually done. Did you know that? It's not actually even done. They never actually finished it. Like one of the actual, like, uh, you know, they, there's two towers. One of the towers isn't even done. They didn't finish. Mm -hmm. They've just been holding off on, on finishing it. But it's huge. Like you could actually fit the Statue of Liberty inside the, the cathedral without the pedestal. Yeah, that place is gigantic. I put the priest in there. Like, they, you know, they're not allowed to curse. And all of a sudden they hear the, the rouse uh, through that door. They're like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, right. Jesus well, Christ. You know, I remember years ago when David Dinkins was uh, mayor, he was given a speech somewhere in front of some project and gunfire like erupted in the background and everyone's yeah. like ducking as yeah. he's given this speech. That was the New York of those of that. Well, day. yeah, it's like the, the Bronx is burning days where, where like they would show the, of the above the bill above the, the buildings, like for Monday night football and the actual buildings were all on fire, yeah. you know, like, where, yeah, I that's remember what it how it goes. So yeah, is the nature of New York city. Yeah. This, you know? <laughs> yep. Yep. I would go sell going to pontificate about politics. You know? That's right. Yeah. Howard he was Cosell. the most imitated sportscaster, I think, of all time. I, I yeah. Well, he's so I easy don't to do imitate. a good Howard Cosell, but he, everyone tried to imitate him, right? Yeah. He was pretty awesome, though. I yeah, think he, was, he was a lawyer. He was interested. Was he really? Well, the guy with a law degree didn't use it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you know who else has a law degree? Steve Young. Did you know that? Yes, I did know that. Steve Young, the quarterback, has a law degree. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. That's really random. But well, he probably yeah, he makes so much public. more money as a broadcaster than he could he ever make. BYU. Right? Yeah, he went to BYU. But um, uh, who are we saying just had the law degree? Uh, Costell? Yeah, Costell. As a matter of fact, I think, he, you know, uh, he's um, the way he got into the sports was interesting. You know, it was like a side thing that he would do. And then all of a sudden, yeah. Well, but I feel like back then, though, like you could get into anything as a side thing. Like you have people who like wrote their first jokes and then become writers for you know, for you know Johnny Carson because there just wasn't the same like specialization as there is now, and the intensity of the competition, everything was different. All these industries were so new too, you know. Well, you, you know what's funny is that now that we're going through this uh, COVID, you're gonna see all these sayings. They're gonna might be changed around, but they're, they're the same value in them when they say, um, save for a rainy day or get yourself a secure job. Well, what does that mean, really? You know, that means people went through a hardship and they saw what it was like. And, you know, we got so crazy that we would actually enc en encourage our kids. Oh, you want to be a comedian? Yeah, I'll take you to the. You want to be a rapper? Oh, that's good. <laughs> Let's go. You want a professional dancer? Fantastic! Like these careers actually became something that, you know, you want to be a professional baseball player. You know, I remember thinking my son could be a professional. The, the odds and the chances of it actually happening, and now you're faced with the fact yeah. uh, this progressed, you like a world war or. Uh, uh, a depression for three or four more years. That's where that mindset gets something secure, get a good job. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, that was the, we, the people. Yeah, the people from the depression. That was exactly. That's why this reset right now may be a value. You know what I'm saying? And the, the reason why I mentioned, you know, because my son, who's in nursing school right now, if he were to turn around and be like, "Oh, I think I want to be," uh, I don't know, whatever. I mean, like, no, you should probably do that for a couple of years. Get your money together. See what it's like before you decide to do something like that. No, it's true. That's a good point. I always love when you hear all these students saying that have student loans. Oh, the government should pay for my loans. And I'm just like, I paid 300 and something thousand dollars for my kids to go to college. I paid it. I worked three jobs to put them through school, right? And if they pay for their student loans, they're going to write me a check for 300K? I just finished it. I think well, not. <laughs> I know, Tom, you're like you're you're like thinking uh, you're a social scientist and you're thinking <laughs> that maybe the government should pay for these student loans. Yeah, but you know what? If you look at what they're actually offering at first, it was fifty thousand dollars, which, OK, that might help some people if you don't have that much. If you're not saddled with that much. But the average student that has a student loan is between 80 and 100 thousand. OK, but then they dropped it to 10 thousand. What is 10,000 going to do? Nothing. Yeah. Towards my student loan. Tom, do you got student loans for law school? No, I'm actually, I'm actually okay. I, oh. I, 
I will brain surgeon father paid for you to go to well, school, right? Oh man, no. <laughs> I actually went to I went to college on a scholarship. I went to college on a full scholarship. And comedy, uh, a comedy scholarship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. A comedy scholarship, Bill. I went on a, <laughs> no, not, I just on an academic scholarship and, uh, and with the money that I was going to have for college, I just went, it went to what law was, school. What was your SAT score? Uh, I think I got a 1280. Yeah. You, you doubled mine. Really? I think so. Almost. Yeah. Uh, what, what'd you get? <laughs> You're going to be like, I got a 1,000. I think I got like a That's 700. Not double. I think oh, okay. I got like a 700. And 600 I got for setting my name right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I just went to, so I, I guess though, the option would be though, if they offered, let's say state schools for free, that would already be a huge New York benefit. It does, but you have to make under a certain amount of money. So, no, but that de it depends. Yes. It de that's the thing. It depends on the state you're in. Some states are more generous than others. Like Florida is pretty generous. I think New yeah. York's pretty generous. Other ones are not as generous. And you're going to be, you're just basically, if you go to college, you're going to have debt, which kind of stinks. I want to, at the age of 64, just bang out a law degree. So I, could say, so I could say I have one. And then I could say I'm a pilot. That's a lot. That's a lot of work. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, you know, if I was going to do that, I'd find out where uh, Kim Kardashian is going to law school. And I join that class. That's the class I want to be in. I think she's doing, isn't she doing it online or something? I don't know what she's doing, but she's going to be a lawyer. You know what else went back to school uh, for for a law degree was Jerry O'Connell, the actor. Uh huh. Kush from Jerry Maguire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he went back. He went to like a like a school in California. It's not a very good school. Sorry. Oh, but... Duty Ron says his his credit score is eight fifty. What's yours? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably like six something. I also seven hundred. 850 is excellent. You can borrow money any from anyone. Yeah, nobody's giving me nothing. Right? 850 is pretty good. I don't even have a credit card. You know what's so messed up? Is on, you're making big coin off of YouTube. Stop bullshitting. You have I'm not. Thousand views on your Greenwich Village walk. You keep saying this. I, it's 15,000 views. I just looked on my Greenwich Village uh, video. I but 888. <laughs> no, it's 50, 15,000. But I, I make some money. But I, I mean, I still live with roommates. I live in Ridgewood, Queens. I'm not. I'm not killing it yet <laughs> but uh do you have the biggest room in the apartment <clears throat> that is true right. that is true well. I do. <laughs> wait wait, wait, wait. I, do you have your own bathroom no uh, okay what do he's i look like bill gates over here roommates. he's trying to convince his roommate they need a will <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's got the template he just draws it up for them right? no no i mean the next move will be to a place by myself but you know that's the next thing we'll see yeah well but, you know listen you got a couple of years before you know, we're like once you're 50 years old, you are looking to get your own place. Yeah, exactly. I'll look into settling down. Yeah. That's a New York comedian thing. 40, yeah. 40, 45 and 50. Are you going to have any kids, Tom? I don't know. Maybe. I, I, I don't know. I'm no, no time in the near future, though. Uh-huh. I don't know. That's the one best thing that, that's so messed up about comedy and what a horrible business it is. For example, I mentioned earlier that I've been, I, I, that I was, I've been doing comedy longer than I was a cop. And I was a cop for 20 years. I have a pension. God bless. Thank God. You know, God bless America. Um, Health care. And yet comedy, this thing happens. You're finished. You're done. Yeah. And it's a horrible, horrible business. I mean, that's pretty much all entertainment, though, sadly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, are you a dancer? I mean, dancers, they can't even do it after like 33 years old. So it's like you can. What are you gonna do after that? Just become a dance teacher, I guess. That's all you can do. You're not. You're. You know, all but this Tom, kind of. I just. I just got a year and a half ago a new hip, so I got a new left hip, and I have bad arthritis in my. Brag hip. about it, why don't you? Well, hey, it's. I got free titanium <laughs> in my hip, you know? and I went. My shoulders messed up, so I uh -huh. go to see this shoulder surgeon, and it's actually Cuomo's cousin. I think. Really. Francis Cuomo. She's supposed to be one of the top shoulder surgeons in the country. So I go there and she looks at it. She goes, you know, it, it's pretty bad. She goes, but you know, this is elective surgery. She goes, it's pretty tough. It's like three to six months, nine months recovery. And it's painful. I said, I ain't doing it. <laughs> I just said, so I'm you... not doing it. And she, the other part of it is that it doesn't last forever. It's like a 12 to 15 year lifespan. All right. Well, you're, listen, I'm, I'm you're 64 not, years old right now. 12, 15 years. If you, right, right. But I might, might as well wait till I'm 70. At least it'll last pretty much for the rest of my life. Uh huh. You know what I mean? 
I can put up with it for now. It's I mean, you I, jerk off with your left hand. You'll be all right. Oh, I'm righty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's well, the problem. You need all new parts as you get older, you know? Yeah. Well, we're at an hour 20. Um, yeah. Where does the time go? Well, let's, let's <laughs> shout out to our, to our new fans, Mark. We got some duty, Ron. Thank you so much for pushing us and getting some of your fans to, to follow us. Dookie, Nat Man, Josher, uh, 672E Galaxy, Kathy Drew, Matt Sully. Uh, some people left. They couldn't take us anymore. But uh, eight Higgs. And if you like the show, we, we, we have over 100 now. Uh, please uh, subscribe to our YouTube. And Mark is now doing his own show called One on One with Mark DeMeo. And I'm doing my own show called Real Crime Stories with Bill Cannon. In fact, tomorrow I have one of the most amazing guests I'm interviewing a retired chief, Joe Herbert, who actually solved the um, Zodiac killer case when he was a young. Oh, wow. That's cool, man. Young detective a guy. And he wound up did 36 years on the NYPD and uh, retired as the head of the Joint Terrorist Task Force. Wow. What an interesting guy. So, well, hey, Bill, do you know that there's a comedian who has a true crime, a true crime YouTube channel that's actually really popular? Who's that? In New York. His name's Scott Sharp. You should look him up. It's his his channel's called True Crime Loser. I love Scott Sharp. Yeah, Scott Sharp. Look it up. It's called True Crime Loser. You should look him up and maybe have him on or something because he's got he's a pretty he's got a pretty popular channel. He's doing pretty and well. You should with have it. me on his show. Or yeah, well, he, I don't know if he. You should watch his his stuff. He doesn't really do. He just does stuff from like his room. He doesn't even have people on. Wow. He just kind of talks about it for like thirty minutes and that's he it. Talks about like, that that duty run started like that. Yeah, he got twenty one thousand followers. I want to steal. Tom Delgado's 88,000. You keep making these 88,000. Where are they, the numbers coming from? Who knows? 95,000. He's up to, Bill, yeah. I just checked. He's up to 95,000. He's up to 10 million followers on this Greenwich Village. You know how much uh, money that is a month? He's probably making like 5K a month just from the Greenwich Village. Walk. No, no way, dude. Not even close. You see what I got to put up with? <laughs> yeah, Bill. Oh man, Bill's your numbers guy. You got to, you got to deal with him. You got to have me on your show again. Let's take a walk together. I'm happy to, man. I'm happy to. And next time, dude. Next time I'm on, I, I, I didn't know you guys were on YouTube. I, I'll definitely plug it and and uh, put you post in the community page where I let people know what I'm doing and uh, and then they can tune in. Absolutely. People love the live stuff. What do they call that? Cross pollination. They call it collab, collab? In, the, in the biz. I Collabs. Pollination. Cross pollination is uh, not I'm what they a call scientist. it. Scientist, you didn't know I. Had yeah, a you're a real biologist over here. <laughs> good. That was good. You know, no, I actually yeah. have a master's degree, Tom. In what? I have an AA, a BA, I have an MS in security management. Uh, uh, security management. You know, okay. I have to tell this joke though. One time, I was going to testify in court, and there was this young DA. She was really pretty. I remember her name, but I won't say it. She goes, Sergeant, I'm going to put you on the stand, and I want to humanize you in the eyes of the jury. What is your educational background? So I said, well, I have a, an AA, a BS, uh, an, M, an A, no, an AA, a BA, an MS, and a BMF. And she goes, I know what an AA, a BA, and an MS is. She goes, what's a BMF? I go, I'm a bad motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> she, I think she was gonna quit law that day. She was embarrassed. <laughs> She became a tour guide after that. Right, exactly. <laughs> if she's lucky, come on. She's got eighty thousand views. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, she's yeah she's got eighty eight thousand on her Greenwich Village video now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else, Bill? What, you want to say anything, Mark? You want to plug anything? Uh, well, yeah, I got. Um, I'm gonna unleash the uh, episode that I did of Mark the Mayo one on one with. Um, it's with Aaron Loman. He has an Instagram. He's a current member of the service, a sergeant. Um, he was obese at one time for most of his life. And then he had an epiphany and he started working out. And now he's almost like a body, a professional bodybuilder. He's amazing. Wow. And uh, he has an Instagram called huge underscore fat underscore loser. And he does a lot of inspirational stuff on there. You could take, you could take a look at his pictures, but you know, he's basically uh, on the show and he's telling me about how to keep your weight down during the holidays 
and how to, uh, you know, keep the workout up so we don't gain so many pounds with the COVID and plus the holidays. So that's what I got coming out. I'm going to drop it tomorrow. That's great. That's awesome. Tom, you got anything you want to plug? I mean, not the, just my channel, I guess. Tom DNYC, uh, you know, just make up, try to make a video a week and uh, different stuff around New York. Trying to grow that uh, in the Patreon, Tom DNYC, and that's pretty much it, man. I, uh, yeah, check it out. You guys will like it. It's, it's really cool. I try to pack it with as much information as possible, try to make them entertaining and, you know, try to get people a glimpse into New York as as uh, quiet as it may be. It's still pretty pretty cool to see, I guess. I don't know. Tom, you're a funny guy, man. Thanks, dude. It's uh, it's always fun to see you guys. It's always good yeah, to no, check in. have you on, man. It really is. Yeah. Good. It's the only way we get to see you. Yeah. Well, can't this is the only way you get to see most people. I, I can't get on your show in Poco anymore because it doesn't exist. It's, yeah. Thank you for <laughs> reminding me. I I, uh, I realized that. How about your partner? How's she doing? She's good. I actually saw her a few days ago. She's good. I mean, she's been doing some stand up too, but I mean, she has a day job and she's working from home. She works in fashion. Oh, she's, a show, fashion. she's a designer. That's right. Yeah. She's yeah. a fashion designer. And, uh, you know, she's been working from home and she's been busy and yeah, man, it's, it, you know, everyone's kind of doing their own thing. I don't see anyone anymore. It's sad. I see her. I see a few other comics, but that's it. And then that, like, literally maybe three other people, and those are the only people I see. Well, except for the 88,000 people that watch that, that, that you. Except watch for the, you walk to Greenwich Village. <laughs> they see you a lot, though. You might not see them, but they're watching you every that's day. That's right. That's right. That's my 88,000. Piling up the numbers every day. I think you should take a walk through the tunnels, like, you know, of the subways. Oh, like, I think you're talking about like the Holland Tunnel or yeah, something. The places you're prohibited from going, you should walk through there and say. I would love to. I'd love to. Maybe, Colorado. maybe I should. Uh, maybe I should get you to show your badge yeah. and get us in there. There's a gigantic rat in that corner over there. You got to see how many times you keep calling back that joke. This yeah, is that's a right. rat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom. Down here. So, all right, right. I've had enough of you guys. All right, yeah, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. All the best. And if I don't see you, Merry Christmas. Okay. Yeah, likewise. Likewise. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas to everyone. you guys. Tell your father I said I'm sorry. I sympathize with <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Police off the cuff signing off. Thank you very much.